Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to be demonstrating techniques for ink drawing with brushes and dip pens. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I am using a random assortment of whatever ink that I just grabbed out of my <laughs> ink box. This is a little bit of this and that, but Kat, you have a slightly more organized ink collection, if I'm correct. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to show this. So our prof has recently acquired a large collection of Dr. P.H. Martin inks and watercolors, and I'm going to show you the different uses of them all. And so the ones I have right here are India inks, and I'll show you the box in which I keep them. Oh my gosh, it's a huge box. It's kind of heavy, but... It's very impressive, I have to say, Kat. Right. It's just a bunch of inks. I'm so excited to use them. You know, I've actually never used colored inks before receiving this collection. I've only ever used black inks, so I'm so excited to see how these function with the nib pens. But not only inks, I will do sort of an under sketch and underpainting in watercolors. And Dr. P.H. Martin also has watercolors. And let me show you. I actually bought a special case that you used to hold nail polish. <laughs> like, it looks like this. And normally you would hold nail polish in it. But in my case, I hold a bunch of these watercolors. So let me show you like that. And they're very like concentrated watercolors in these bottles. All you and they come with like a little dip. Let me show you like that. And you just need a drop, and you can dilute it with water or whatever. And they basically function like watercolor. They are watercolor. <laughs> how, how did you discover Dr. P. H. Martin's? Because actually, I didn't know about their products until you introduced me to them. I've heard about them on the internet. Some really famous illustrators, such as Yuko Shimizu, they use Dr. P.H. Martin inks. And I've known them more for their black inks, but then I saw their website and I saw, oh, they have a whole assortment of colors. And they're, I think they're one of the leading ink producers. Like they're very high quality and they have a huge assortment of colors and different kinds of inks. There's India ink, there's drawing ink, they have acrylic ink, and then they also go into the watercolor realm as well. Well, Kat, what's the difference between liquid watercolor and just drawing ink? Because honestly, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would assume the formula is different. So for instance, this is radiant concentrated watercolor, but I also know that there's a synchromatic transparent watercolor. I have no idea what the differences are, but they're all pretty colors and I assume I can use them all together on one canvas. So I'm just going to do that. Well, Kat, I think the last time I picked up this dip pen was in high school. <laughs> no, nah, no exaggeration. <laughs> well, now you can show off your rusty skills in front of everybody watching. <laughs> And Kat, did you say where you got that big glass display case? Just Amazon. I think you just have to type in nail polish shelf or nail polish holder or something like that. Do people really own that many colors of nail polish? <laughs> You'd be surprised. No, I don't paint my nails. I don't have any knowledge of this world of nail polish. I don't really paint my nails either. I, I think I actually stopped when I started doing comic work professionally because if I colored my nails a certain color and I was working with very precise technical ink drawing and I accidentally scratched my page, I would sometimes leave a streak of color from the nail polish. Oh. I guess that's something I just never think about <laughs> uh cat my flower looks like it has an acne problem 
do you want that to, to be part of the drawing? <laughs> Well, the prompt was to merge all these flowers together. And I didn't want to just make a bouquet of flowers, which is what I did first. And so now my house has an acne issue. You do you, Clara. <laughs> Rachel says liquid watercolors dilute well and work mostly like watercolors, but without the pigment. Drawing inks are generally meant to be used straight from the bottle, but they can be used however you want. Well, thank you for the very concise explanation that neither of us could provide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Honestly, they have all these rules and specifics for mediums. And yeah, you can just gain an understanding of how they are used in specific contexts, but you can use the materials however you want. <laughs> Well, I don't know if this is just the internet cat, but I just find that there's a lot of people who are very convinced that things have to be a certain way and you may not ever use a little paint like that. Oh, people just chill out, okay? It's fine, right? Mm, right. Honestly, there are just so many colors. I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm not sure which color to choose. I'm just like grabbing a random one. Like, That's pink. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> You know something? I have that problem too. When there's just too many options, it's hard to know where to even begin. Just putting a drop of each color. This is my first time ever using these watercolors, you guys. So judge me. <laughs> this specific brand or have you never used liquid watercolors? I've never used liquid watercolors before. <laughs> oh, really? I thought you would use them before, just not this brand. No, I would usually use it from like the little cakes, the palettes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really cool. I'm excited to see what you do. Cause I know you do a lot of ink stuff, but this right. is quite different. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just <laughs> doing whatever. I'm doing my best here. Isn't that what we're, what we're doing most of the time is just whatever. Yeah. Everybody has to stop taking art so seriously. Just do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should do cat. I think we should do a stream as teenage cat and teenage Clara. Why? <laughs> so that we can like talk like this. <laughs> no, I don't wish to do this. <laughs> Maybe if we hit like a million subscribers or something. <laughs> Well, apparently I told people I was going to dance at a million. Oh, okay. So you can dance and I can do a teenager impression. Perfect. I don't know. I sort of want to meet frat boy cat really bad. Frat boy cat. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like frat boy cat would just talk with like a really low muffled voice and just be like, yo man, what's up? Like, this is frat boy cat. <laughs> I don't think that's like much of a spectacle. <laughs> well... We, we would find ways to pull the cat out of the frat boy. <laughs> pull the cat out of the frat boy. Exactly. Okay, the thing about these watercolors I'm seeing for some of them is that they do congeal or they settle. There's like sediment on the bottom. You can kind of see that right there. And you do have to shake them sometimes. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> when you shake what? them, it produces bubbles and then... Sometimes the bubbles will just pop everywhere and leave flecks of little color everywhere, which is hard to see, but it did leave little dots of pink everywhere because I had to shake the bottle. And then there were bubbles. It's kind of pretty. The bubbles? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like that type of thing. I did not intend for that to happen, though. I'm a careful person, Clara, and I don't like when things stray out of my plans. <laughs> You know, Kat, life is not all about control. It needs to be spontaneous and like embrace the world. God, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, what it is? This mm -hmm. is the voice of this woman who I saw in Utah. We were traveling in Southern Utah. It was in Moab, which is this really cute little desert town. I mean, it's more of a town than anything you'll find in Southern Utah. And so she's holding her phone and she's walking down the street 
and she's going, hey guys, I'm in Moab. It's like so nice out here. The sun is like beautiful. She's like live streaming Instagram as she walks down the street saying this. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this world is full of complex people. <laughs> or not so complex people. <laughs> That's what makes people complex. You have to have the not so complex in comparison. <laughs> C. Cantrell says, I think that's why, like art prof, you give good instruction and promote, quote, do whatever. <laughs> I know it took us, uh, well, it took me just a few decades of teaching to figure out that that's just what people need to hear sometimes. Yeah, I think one barrier to art making is just fear. Fear that things won't turn out well, things that you're fear that you're wasting time, fear that you're wasting materials. And sometimes you just got to be a little bit more casual about it. Don't expect so much out of yourself. Don't think so hard about it. Just do it. And then you'll be surprised what you'll produce. I mean, I get it. Sometimes we just make utter crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes we just mess it up so bad. But that's just what it is. I mean, I'm not superhuman. I want to give a shout out to Tyler Blair, who says, I sold my first two commissions last week due to the help of the Business for Artists videos. Thanks so much for all the hard work of the Art Prof team and the great advice you guys give. Wow, congratulations. That's like really exciting, Tyler. Congratulations, Tyler. That's amazing to hear. I'm glad that we could help you and I'm glad that you are helping us in return with the super chat. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> So Emmy is asking, what materials am I using? Okay, like I said, random mix of art supplies. Kat, I seriously do not even know where this is from. It just says Royal Blue Writing Ink. I don't even know what brand it is. I think it came with this dippy quill pen that I bought. You know, those silly kits that they have at stationery stores, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then this is Windsor & Newton Drawing Ink, which is pretty familiar. And then I have a little bit of Higgins India Ink. And what I did is I put mostly red ink in here and then a little drop of the blue and a little drop of the black. And honestly, it just looks like blood. <laughs> it looks like dry <laughs> blood. <laughs> and actually, Kat, have you ever used this dip pen? Do you see how mine has this weird angle? No, I've never used those kind of dip pens before. I've seen them on the internet, though. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. What's so special about those pens? You know something? I confess the only reason I'm using it is because I couldn't find my regular one. <laughs> <laughs> See, just do whatever in art. You can use whatever materials, however you want. <laughs> well, just my whole life is, where's my ruler? Who took my utility knife? Where's my... And I'm like, ah the amount of time I spend doing this stuff. It's so dumb. So Kat, here's the thing that I want to know about dip pens. A lot of people find them really hard to do. And the reason I know this is because I once made the mistake of making my high school class use dip pens. I have never heard so much whining in my life. They mm. hated them. And so why do you think it's worth learning? Because they're not easy to use. Sometimes the angle's unclear, or if you press too hard or press too light, they're actually not that easy to use. They're not that easy to use, but they have very precise results. You can get very fine with a dip pen. And it's all about line when it comes to dip pen, how it can be thicker or thinner or very, very detailed or not detailed at all it can be very scratchy so there's 
there's a preciseness, but there's also a casualness to dip pen if you can utilize it well enough. I will, I will criticize my own art practice. I think I use dip pen too precisely, and I wish I could be a little bit more casual about it. I think that f once you find that freedom in dip pen, that is a sign that you are a good dip pen artist. The reason why it is so hard for people to get into it, though, is because you have to learn how to be precise before you can have fun and just do whatever. <laughs> and it's that barrier to learn this medium that prevents a lot of people from using it. And I understand it is a frustrating medium. It's not going to be fun right from the get go. In my opinion, for some people, it could be very fun. I don't know. <laughs> do you think people just give up too soon? Yeah, I do think that, especially for dip pen. Because my high school students were so frustrated. It's like they just gave up. Like they didn't even give it a shot, which is strange because normally they have a little more patience than that, but they mm. did not like it. I don't know, maybe it's just too foreign because it, it's not like anything else, right? I agree. It's, yeah, it's not quite like anything else. I do want to point out that I've been somewhat following, been following a little thumbnail sketch I did beforehand. So I was saying I wanted to be casual about it, but at the same time, I did do some planning beforehand. That's just how I function as a person. And I feel like this aspect of myself is a reason why dip pen works for me because <laughs> I'm the right kind of person suited for this kind of medium. People just have to go find their mediums. I mean, I just don't think a lot of people are suited for dip pens. Like if you compare it to say the number of people that do digital art, it's minuscule, don't you think? Hmm. Maybe I'll go with this India ink. That's just green. I'm going to use green India ink. <laughs> So how do those watercolors flow so far? Do they flow pretty well or? They flow pretty well. In my, oops, okay, in my limited experience with watercolor. Um, Your 10 minute experience? Yeah, to my 10 minute ex experience with watercolor. <laughs> I, I find these watercolors very saturated, like super, super bright. Um, and I think that has to do with them being in bottles and, and piping pipettes, pipettes, um, this sort of watercolor medium that makes them so bright. But otherwise, they flowed like watercolor. They were, they're watercolor. <laughs> well, that's interesting because when I use watercolor, I find it very hard to get rich, rich, saturated colors. It, it's actually, oh. it takes work. Yeah, you'll have no problem with these. <laughs> Is this just like watercolors on steroids or something? Yeah, that's what I'm feeling like they are. No, okay, I want I'm going some. To start... Ooh, okay, yeah, I should have waited for this to dry. <laughs> oh, this is a mess. <laughs> Can you please you need dry? a hair dryer. Where's your hair dryer? I keep one under my it's desk. It's right there, but it's too loud. <laughs> well, just mute yourself, silly. I have to go get it. I don't. I don't want to get it. Oh. I'll just like. Oh my gosh, Clara! Stop teasing me. <laughs> Can't help it. So I mean, Lil while was saying, mm -hmm. what type of flower are you painting? If you all go down to the YouTube video description below, we do have links to all the reference photos that Kat and I are using. They are available on our free reference photo collection, which is on Flickr. You can use all of our photos for free. They're high resolution ones that I shoot with my DSLR camera. And we've got pigs and bread and flowers and pretty much anything <laughs> you can think of. While this is drying, maybe I can explain a little bit of about how I ink. So this is a genib, but it's quite a big genib. I'm actually not sure where I got this one from because it's like five years old. 
but this one I got on Amazon <laughs> and it's a G nib pen under the zebra nib brand. The handle is Tachikawa. And these are the two I usually use. This one is a really thin line and this one's a much thicker line. And I'm using the thicker line one for now because the textured watercolor paper holds up a little bit better to the thicker nib than it does for the thinner dainty one. Usually for ink, and I'm doing the same for black ink and colored ink and whatever, I just like dip it straight into the ink. I, if I were to be committed to an ink color, I would actually take a little bit of this ink out and put it into a little bottle outside of the big bottle because it's a little cumbersome to dip it right in. The ink could get on the handle. So I usually put it in a little jar and I tape it to the table. Um, as for how I clean the nib, I just dip it into a little glass of water and wipe it down with a, with a paper towel, which is probably not the right way to do it. But you know what? My mediums, the way I draw, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> You know what, Kat, I'm convinced that none of us here do things the quote correct way. I always feel like a Neanderthal. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, once in art school, one of my classmates were like, oh, Kat, I want to see how you ink and clean your pen nib and whatever. And she was like shocked how <laughs> tough I was on my nib. I just went... Pfft. <laughs> like she thought I'd be more delicate. She thought there was like a process. And I was like, no girl, you yeah. just dip it in the ink and you draw. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Well, do you know the chef Jacques Pepin? Yeah. Jacques, yeah. He did a really famous egg recipe video that I like to reference from time to time. <laughs> You should watch him make an omelet. He's amazing. But mm -hmm. what I really like about him, he always have these FAQs at the back of his cookbook. And one of his most asked questions is, what is the best nice, what is the best knife to have? And his answer was a sharp one. <laughs> ah, which I just love because everybody gets all uptight about their knife brands and their cutting board. It's like he doesn't care. He just wants it to work. Mm, that's how I feel about my drawing mediums too. I just wanted to work. Some work better than others, but I have to test them out. Emmy says, Kat, do you use cold press paper with your ink pen? I usually use hot press because I skitter like a crazy person over the rougher textures. <laughs> um, yeah, I should use hot press next time. <laughs> I, I think that the cold press does have a lot of this textury material that doesn't suit to pen, yet I am using it regardless. Um, but you, normally I would use Bristol paper, which is completely smooth. But the reason why I'm not using that right now is because it doesn't hold up to watercolor very well. It holds up to inking, but it doesn't hold up to large swaths of water. And we have another question on line it says, would you use lines as a direction of the shape? You definitely can. That's what I'm doing. I mean, a lot of the flower that I'm drawing right now is largely in shadow. So right now I'm not really trying to show the form as much as I am just trying to build up the density of lines. And then maybe when I get there, I'll start to be more purposeful. But yeah, like if I have a petal that's curled up, I'll try to make strokes that show that curly round shape. What about you, Kat? Yeah, I agree with your method of drawing, Clara. You use line to build form. You use line to build shape and form and texture. You use line for everything in dip pen. Um, I'll say, oh, I'm just gonna cr keep critiquing my, my ink drawing, but <laughs> the way I draw ink drawings is just very cartoonish. Like I have a large outline that defines the shape and it defines the form. And I wish I could be a little bit more casual about it and do hatch marking and stuff like that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that now. Well, I'm doing it a little bit up here because there's this like loopy shape. And so I'm doing these shorter strokes 
that follow that loop. I mean, I do find with hatching that it's really important to think about the length of your strokes. If you do long strokes versus really short ones, is that something you consider, Kat? Yeah. Every aspect of the line when, when using dip pen matters. So if you're going to use shorter strokes, that will start to denote like texture and shadow and give the illusion of it, at least, especially when you build it up over time. When you use longer lines, that, I don't know, it becomes more cartoonish, I guess. There's more of a style to that usage of line as well. You know what else? I noticed that shorter strokes, they're easier to control. I find that once my strokes start getting long, I'm not able to make them do what I want as much. Mm -hmm. That's such a fine artist approach to this. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it. God's Little Artist says, Kat, love your colors used. Oh, yeah, that... Magenta is like electric. Thank you. Well, I have the concentrated watercolor from Dr. P.H. Martins to thank for that, honestly. I didn't mean for it to be so bright. <laughs> but happy, happy little accidents, as Bob Ross always says. Now let's hope I don't ruin it with my line. <laughs> hey, did you hear there's a Bob Ross documentary on Netflix? Oh, wow, really? I did not it hear about that. It just came out. I heard about it on NPR today. The history behind Bob Ross and the brand behind the Bob Ross name is controversial, to That's say the it. least. That's what the whole documentary is about. Yeah, there's a lot of like, there's a lot more pain behind the brand than I realized. Isn't that the way everything is? <laughs> I mean, like, you, yeah. you ever watch these? Hollywood documentaries where people are like, yes, this director is so smart and we all had such a great time. And I'm like, I don't believe you guys. Hmm. I did not watch the documentary, but I did read a very lengthy article, which I immediately forwarded to Jordan McCracken Foster. <laughs> Why did why'd you send it to Jordan? He's like the biggest Bob Ross fan. That's true. Yeah. Well, Jordan and I were very excited about the Spider-Man trailer because Benedict Cumberbatch is in like half the oh, movie. Oh gosh. Why is he there? Is he Doctor Strange? Is that why he he's is. there? Of course that's why he's there. I'm happy for you, Clara. I'm happy for you. You make it sound like I'm getting married to a guy that you don't like. I what can I say? <laughs> I think your husband to be is a jerk, but I can be happy for you because I it was your decision. You. <laughs> it's your fault, right? <laughs> Maria says, I'm wondering if inks react to resist techniques like watercolors do, like the one where you use oil based materials to draw first on the paper, then go on top with watercolor. I would guess that it would. I mean, if you put down, say, oil pastel and put these on top, don't you think it would resist the ink? I think it would. I have never tried that, so I can't say for sure. But there are other materials you can use that will resist ink, like, what's it, masking fluid? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, masking fluid will definitely resist the ink. Do you use masking fluid, though? It always seems like such a cool trick. But honestly, I can't plan that far in advance. I've never used masking fluid. I think that I'm a simple person. I just <laughs> need ink and a pen and paper. <laughs> and anything beyond that, I'm no longer interested in experimenting. <laughs> Jeez, Kat, I didn't know you were so black and white. That's what my art literally is. It's just black and white, Clara. <laughs> Uh, it is not. You've done some digital coloring in some of your comics. Yeah, of course I have. I mean, I don't want to just be a black and white artist, but I mean, you know what, Clara? You know what it is? Is that traditional color is something I don't experiment enough in. Oh. 
Wouldn't yeah, you agree? Yeah, because most of the color work I see you do, it's all digital, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, because it's fast. It's fast and I can control that. <laughs> it's all about control, Kat. Mm -hmm. And by the way, speaking of dip pens, if you have not seen it yet, I just premiered this dip pen tutorial with Song Kang, and it's available to watch now. So we're just on this dip pen kick here at Art Prof today. I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> My time has come. <laughs> You're so dramatic. My God. <laughs> Okay, so Kat, does it look like acne or does it look like crispy clouds? Ah, uh, it looks like a cactus. <laughs> really? Yeah, it looks like a succulent. Ooh, I kind of like that. Mm. Well, I have not posted images yet, but I did shoot a cactus tutorial when I was on vacation. But weren't you on vacation, Clara? Why would you work? That's not work. That's fun. Sure. Okay. <laughs> you know what's not fun? Sending invoices and hunting people down to be paid. That is not fun. Fair point. Like, why is that hard? You send the invoice, you pay. It's not that difficult, right? Not everyone's a genius like you, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us are simple-minded like you. Oh, ow. Why would you... <laughs> hey, you told me. You were like, I'm a simple person. So now I, I did not say I was simple-minded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't win. So Official Mouse says, would you rather have your art with your loved ones, despite it being in storage or in a museum, moving around the world? I think I'd much rather it be in a museum. Why would I want it just sitting in an attic? That's How about you, Kat? an interesting thought because we're dealing with your individual fame, versus the integrity of the art staying within a circle of loved ones, right? But I mean, I think I would rather it be in museums because that is more, I'm assuming I'm no longer alive. That is more profitable <laughs> for like for everyone. I think if it were to stay within the family household and just like, rot away there like no one's paying money for it no one's seeing it what's the point of it existing right i mean to me if you're gonna do that you might as well just like stick it in a coffin isn't that pretty much what you're doing if it ever gets seen again by the public yeah i agree i mean you could leave your loved ones a couple of paintings. I'm not saying they shouldn't have access to any of them, but just never letting the world see any of it is really a little bit sad. There is a certain vanity when being an artist, because why do you make art? Sure, you make it for self, but mostly you make it for other people to see. <laughs> yeah. So Starving Artist is asking, Kat, do you ever use those glass-tipped ink pens? If so, do you like them? How do they feel? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I've never used them because I am a simple person and I already have my <laughs> ink pen. <laughs> but given the opportunity, I would love to try. <laughs> I've never used those. They look too pretty to work with. Right? They're like not... They almost, yeah, they seem too pretty to be used. You ever have art supplies that are so pretty you feel like you don't want to use them? I feel like that's how I would feel about it. Yeah, I absolutely have art supplies like that. I have this really nice set of 
Copic markers. I'm like looking at them right now. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just, they're so precious. I almost don't want to use them. I only have the one set, you know? Well, Alex and I talked in the stream yesterday about how having a really expensive brush, you know, these brushes that are like $50. Have you seen these? I've heard of them. Yeah. And I was like, if I had a brush that was $50, I would be so worried I would ruin it that it would make me not want to use it. Exactly. Or here's another example. So I once did this workshop. I was organizing it with this amazing photographer who was a total pro. And he had the most amazing camera equipment I've ever seen. And he told me that the camera he uses costs $3,000. I'm like, I don't even think I'd want to hold a camera that is worth $3,000. That would stress me out. Agreed. Would not want to hold like three thousand dollar camera. I don't even know what to do with it. I mean, I'm sure it's good, but you probably have to be really good to actually be able to do something good with it. That's noticeable. Mm -hmm. See, Karim says, cat smells like bubble gum. Oh, cat. Cat smells like bubble gum and prof lose a cotton candy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, Brittany says, that's like having old wine or scotch worth thousands. How do you drink that? I would not drink that. I guess I would just admire it in my wine cellar. Yeah, it'll only get more valuable the older it becomes. <laughs> I, I don't think I would even want to drink that. I think I would rather sell it. Yeah, but can you imagine that it tastes that good? I mean, come on. It's just wine. It's just wine. I don't know. Um, it, people have different values. <laughs> The only wine I ever drank that I absolutely loved was this wine I had at this tiny little restaurant in Rome. And to this day, I have never had wine that I liked that much, ever. Ooh. I don't have particularly good wine stories. <laughs> I've not You're had enough a simple wine. person. <laughs> uh, yeah. I much prefer beer. I really like beer. <laughs> really? You're a beer person? I would not oh, have expected yeah. that from you. I love beer. <laughs> I especially like, um, what's it called? Oh, man, I'm, I'm blanking on the name. It's because I don't drink that much. But it's like a Japanese brand. Sapporo. Sapporo Black. Sapporo Black is one of my favorites. Oh my goodness, Ariel says, I have a $65 brush I was forced to buy for an art class. Oh my gosh, that's absurd. That's too much. <laughs> okay, I just made the mistake of looking over at your drawing cat and now I'm like gonna just go in a corner and cry. It looks pretty all right from afar and a little fuzzy because of the camera <laughs> but the color think... and the combination of that with the line is just so juicy thanks but i really like the form that you've built up with yours that's like the depth of your drawing is something i wish i could achieve more with my line work i'm trying but it's not really going anywhere well you can't have your cake and eat it too but i want to I think you should try this again. It's kind of an amazing combination because the watercolor feels separate from the ink, but they really complement each other, don't you think? 
Yeah, I should do more mixed media things. I think what freaks me out about watercolor is only using watercolor. Mm. Because you really need to be well trained in watercolor for you to use it well. But if you can hide it under the ink, <laughs> then maybe it's not so intimidating after all. Well, so remember you did that tutorial with Julie Ben Bassett where she designed that character and she did ballpoint pen lines, filled it in with watercolor and then enhanced it with colored pencil. And I just thought it was so brilliant because she said, well, listen, if you do all ballpoint pen, it takes forever. If you do all mm -hmm. colored pencil, it takes forever. If you do all watercolor, you don't have a lot of control. And so she said by combining those three together, it's like you're using the strengths of each one and so it does not become as tedious as using them on their own yeah i in that same tutorial i was like wow julie i'm so inspired i'm gonna do that myself and i just haven't but <laughs> i should i should like i'm doing it now so that's something right well i mean now you have that big nail polish rack <laughs> of inks and so you have no excuse Right, exactly. See, before I was just so simple. I was just using black and ink and a nib. And I wasn't going out and buying and experimenting with new materials. But now that I have this, I can experiment. <laughs> Let's give Kat some peer pressure. Who here would like to see Kat use some of these watercolors in some of her own personal work or non-stream work? Because I don't know. I, I wonder if this might even be faster than digital coloring. Oh, I think it would be faster for sure. I'm like thinking about it now because in a way, digital coloring is also quite precise. I have to color within the lines. But yeah. when it's traditional, you have more leeway to go out of the lines and people can be like, oh, it's part of the style. It's not you being lazy. <laughs> Well, because isn't that one of the reasons why a lot of people color digitally is because it is very fast compared to other media? Yeah, it's fast, but also it's hard to achieve a natural looking style through that. It's very mechanical and it can it still takes time. But you yeah. saw how fast I laid down these colors, right? I did it within 10, 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, you were super fast about that. And like that saturation is just 